Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? Um, I'm good. I'm a little tired, but I'm good. How you doing? I am a little tired too. I feel like we're two grumpy old men on the microphone today. I love that. I can't wait to be a grumpy old man. You know, get off my lawn, you lousy kids, you teenagers. Yep. Damn right. <laughs> Okay, so um, what do we got? <laughs> what do we got on the agenda for today's podcast? Well, something that's come up in my world um, the last couple of weeks in conversations with clients and shit that I've been dealing with myself. <clears throat> I wanted to almost have a reminder about what we can and what we can't control. There's a lot of things that we can control, or so we think. And at the end of the day what it comes down to is you can only actually control yourself and what you respond, how you respond, how you act, right? What you think about things um, as it applies to client acquisition. When you throw another human being and all of the weird that they bring into a situation, you can only control so much. And I think a lot of people, especially in the sales training world, a lot of people come at it from the standpoint of, essentially trying to control other people. And when you control other people, all kinds of weird shit goes wrong. So I wanted to talk about control today and really what we can and what we really ought to not try and control to make our lives a little easier. You good with that? Yeah. So I'm going to start off by adding my own two cents and then getting your take on something. Even outside of the sales world, people are always struggling for control and it usually extends past the things that they should be controlling. People are always trying to control what their neighbors do, what their spouses do, what their children do, what their friends do. Uh, it's, it seems to be something that is just built in to humans to want to control other humans. It seems to, and that's where that that's where I think we, as a, as a species go wrong, it seems like we need to, right? Controlling your kids, right? Controlling your spouse or having, having say so and how things are. When we get outside of what we actually can control, everything that we do begins to create this thing we all call drama. What we actually can control is our physical actions and the way we respond to events and shit that happens in our life. That's it. You can, to an extent, control your own thoughts and to an extent, control your own emotions. But really, the, the, the gold in that is, is you can control how you respond to things. And sometimes that means not responding. Mm -hmm. Right? But when we try and when we try and control things outside of that, all we're doing is adding tinder and firewood to a potential dumpster fire. And a lot of people like, I don't do drama. I just don't do it. Like not even a little bit. I don't do drama. And I see a lot of people, especially in my space, as far as this whole world, the sales girl goes, people deal with drama and they're like, Oh, it's just a little bit of drama. And I'm looking at it going, are you, out of your goddamn mind. Like if I had to deal with that, like the sky would be falling down. Like I'm not interested in that. And it all stems from us trying to control stuff outside of that, how we respond to things and our physical actions. So there's an old saying that what you're talking about kind of reminds me of it's a, uh, it's a sailor can't control the wind, but he can control how he positions his sails. Yep. So why and how does that apply to when you get a client on the phone or when you get a prospect on the phone or um, when you're trying to negotiate uh, a better deal with, with what you're doing for an existing client? How does keeping that in mind leave you better off than trying to force? Because a lot of selling systems are 
I think we've talked about this before. A lot of them are based off of stand with this position and use this type of comeback and uh, express your dominance this way. So you can push people into, I don't know, man, I always just kind of get a, I don't like that, that whole thing. And when I feel like somebody's doing that to me, I just want to push back against them Mm -hmm. or punch their teeth down their throat. (laughs) Right. Like here's, here's the, here's the idea. And you, you kind of mentioned this a minute ago and the way you said it was, it seems like we're all always trying to, yes, because that's the primitive animalistic way that we operate, right? The whole alpha, right? That, that whole thing I'm I'm not going to get too much into philosophy here, but when you're trying to be an alpha or if you have to state that you're an alpha, guess what? You're not. Um, and there is a difference between being alpha and trying to be alpha. And what is often the case in communications between people is, is I'm going to force my way to get my way and I'm going to overcome your objections. I'm going to, right manhandle the situation. I'm going to do all of cool. What a waste of energy. And this is the whole concept behind everything I do. People like us, like us. If we can just figure out who it is that is like us because we can figure out what we're like and we only participate with people that are like us, it gets really easy to get clients, especially when you focus that energy on those people that happen to also need and want the thing that you do. Now there's no control because here's the, here's the truth of the matter. For anybody that's ever had a two-year-old child, you'll know exactly what I'm saying, right? Try and control the emotions of a two-year-old child. There's only a couple of things you can do. Pacify them, distract them, right? or put them to sleep. And I don't mean like permanently. I mean like to bed so they go to sleep for the night, right? Usually for a couple hours. If you've ever tried to control the emotions of a two-year-old who's kind of out of their mind, yeah, that adult that you're trying to negotiate with, that you're trying to have control with, might as well be an angry, hungry, wet two-year-old. Because on an emotional level, that whole control thing. When somebody feels like you're trying to get control, guess what they do? Exactly what you said. They push back with what? Control, Mm -hmm. right? Now it becomes a battle of the wills. What a waste of energy. Like, no thanks. Wait, you mean all sales calls that result to a battle of the wills aren't a good thing? No, hell no. I mean, if, if that's your thing, if you want to make it harder on yourself than, than, necessary and you want to work with weak-minded people and you want to get the crap kicked out of you psychologically and emotionally by people that are actually fucking stronger than you go right on ahead have fun with that so i'm gonna flip it on you Ooh, we've, flip been talking, it. <laughs> we've been talking about when you're on a sales call or when you're on a prospecting call and you're trying to control the situation i want to talk about the opposite when somebody when you're when you've obligated yourself to somebody because you've taken their money and now you're realizing they are exerting control that you're not comfortable with. They're, now the controller is, is on their end. Um, what are some things to do to avoid that or to deal with it when it happens? Because I know that for me it's happened and I'm betting for everybody listening right now, it's probably happened where they're like, oh man, I have just gotten in bed with a control freak. A control freak. Yeah, it is improper setting of expectations and boundaries on the front end. And most people don't do a halfway decent job of that to begin with. And most people then don't follow through. And most people who don't do that on the front end and don't follow through don't have any idea how to do it three months into working with a client. And here's what it comes down to. You can't control somebody else. They can't control you unless you choose to allow them to. And that happens when boundaries and expectations have not been set or managed properly. So in my own personal life and in business life, um, I found that typically if you don't set the expectations right away and then somebody violates them, you have one chance right then to say, okay, that's not cool. And we don't do that. Or you're just going to end up getting walked over for the entire 
remainder of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And most people don't know what boundaries and expectations to set. And it's so funny. The more you and I talk and the more you and I record these podcasts, everything, whether it's business related or not, everything comes back to a half a dozen core values, period. If you understand what those are for yourself, life gets really easy. Um, and the the backbone and the wherewithal to say no when it's appropriate, right? Um, yeah, people just don't like look at look at our society as a whole. People don't set boundaries and and then manage expectations. Like if you've got a neighbor that keeps pouring chemicals on your yard and you don't say anything about it and you just right to your spouse about the neighbor throwing chemicals on your garden (sighs) doesn't do anything and that's what actually that's actually what happens more often than not is people just avoid it like the plague and don't communicate about it let alone actually trying to set boundaries and manage expectations but to to get into it really um, setting boundaries and managing expectations comes down to figuring out what it is that you want how do you do that? Figure out what it is that you value. How do you do that? <laughs> right? And it, everything, that, everything that we talk about comes down to basically a half a dozen values and understanding what those are and structuring your world based on that. I think it's uncomfortable, especially when you're brand new starting off a relationship with somebody, whether it's a romantic relationship, a working relationship, a client service provider, service recipient relationship, neighbors. It's hard when you're first meeting somebody to say, hey, these are the do's and the don'ts of of interacting with me. There's there's the fear. Oh, if I if I say right away that this, you know, I don't do this or I don't um I don't uh I don't tolerate this in a relationship, they might leave before they get a chance to know me. And so I don't do this when, when we're working or whatever the case may be, the fear of rejection, the fear of somebody leaving before they get a chance to realize that it's worth dealing with that expectation versus never setting the expectation versus three years down the line being completely miserable because you've constantly broken your own rule over and over because you never let the other person know. How do we get over that? hump right away at the beginning so that we don't end up in that situation three years down the road. Yep. To sum that up into one sentence, you can, you're going to cry. You can cry now a little bit, or you can cry a lot later, right? Um, Nathan, do you and everybody who's listening to this episode remember when you were like 13 or 14 months old, when you finally stood up the first time and walked halfway across the room and then fell down? either on your butt or on your face. Do you remember that? I barely remember what I ate for breakfast this morning. Okay. Well, let me continue with this. Do you remember the first time that you had a big test in school that you recognized was actually like, I'm going to be tested. Oh my God. I'm right. Third, fourth, fifth grade. Uh Do you remember the first time that you kissed a girl? Do you remember the first time that you rode a skateboard? Do you remember the first time that you rode a bicycle without training wheels? Do you remember the first time you drove? Right. Here's the thing. It's no different or no harder or more difficult than any of those things. You got to do it to learn how to do it. And we all start at the same place with setting boundaries and managing expectations. We all got a little bit different skill set when it, when it applies to us individually from our parents as to boundaries and expectations, right? But we all basically start at the same place. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. It's a little uncomfortable now, or it can be a lot uncomfortable later. You choose. Okay, so we talked about why it's not a good idea to force your control onto other people. We've talked about what you can do to limit other people trying to control you. Um, Let's talk a little bit about what things it is okay to control and what things that you can control in a client, client provider, service provider relationship. Yep. It, it comes down to what you will and will not tolerate. 
That's as simple, as basic as I can possibly put it. That's what you can control. You get to choose what you tolerate and you get to choose what you won't tolerate. And most people have that line way into the won't tolerate, right? And so all of the, I will tolerate this and I will tolerate this and I'll kind of tolerate that. And I, I guess I, man, I really don't want to tolerate, but the line's way out there in the shit where we won't tolerate it and we just don't communicate it. You have to define it. Again, you can control basically these couple of things, how you respond to situations and how you take action, right? Somebody could come flying through our neighborhood and drive through my yard and mow down my trees and ashes flowers. I can respond to that any way I choose. How I'm going to feel and what I get to deal with based on how I respond to that and the kind of actions I take is going to dictate the drama I have to deal with, right? We can, we can basically control how we feel, what we think and the actions that we take. That's it. Yes. I a hundred percent agree. I think the funny thing though, is the very last one that you said, controlling the response that you give. And so many people are completely, numb to that ability too. so many people are just uh, something happens and they just respond on instinct and they don't even take a second to stop and say how should I respond to this you've heard me use the the phrase angry 12 year old boy willing to do whatever he wants to get his own way that's one of the aspects of that and it's not just men right like let's be real it's it's humans in general the inability to think and then act decisively based on what we want later is something that a lot of us struggle with. I've been there, right? Somebody says something, oh man. Somebody does something, huh, right? <laughs> Why? Because I feel like I'm not in control. It's so funny how it works. Um, yeah, I no longer choose to deal with clients who try and control me. And I made that distinction a long ass time ago and I set boundaries and manage expectations. Nice. So we kind of went all over <laughs> the road with this one, but I think we covered a lot of really good things that in, in closing, I just want to say the more someone tries to control the outside circumstances, it's usually a good indication that that person has less control over themselves. And uh, in order to gain more control over yourself, you kind of have to let go of some of that stuff. Here's a biggie. When somebody's trying to control outside circumstances and other people, it means that they don't have self confidence. That's it. With, with correct self confidence, and not too much ego. Most people naturally recognize that they can only control themselves. So a pretty good indication of a nightmare client is when they start demanding shit and trying to control all kinds of things. And I had a, I had a sales conversation last week with somebody who their natural state is to kind of try and do that, right? Totally good dude, totally coming from the right place, on the same page with everything natural stance is to try and like begin dictating things because it needs to have control. And I was like, Oh, how you feeling right now? Check in with yourself real quick. He's like, Oh, it was interesting, right? Most people don't even recognize when somebody's like, you talked about driving all over the road. Most people don't realize when somebody's like psychologically drunk, just all over the place with trying to control everything and everybody else slow down and observe. It's pretty interesting. Nice. So I think this episode's going to go down as, as being titled, How to Deal with Control Freaks. Um, if people want more episodes of the podcast, where can they go to check out more of the Sales Gorilla Podcast? SalesGorillaPodcast.com, bitches. All right, nice. Until next time, man, we will catch you later. I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I just can't stand, and I'm sure you feel the same way. Peace out, Cub Scouts.